this is a new edition for Emperor Champagne Club and we are focusing this month on organic viticulture. We're looking at zero carbon emissions. We're looking at how producers today have really put in a lot of effort to make their wineries more modern, more sleek, but also focusing more upon land and, and being more overall conscious about what they're doing with their soils. So right? we've, got, we've got two things here. We've got to focus on natural winemaking, biodynamics, organics. Yes. And they are separate things, of course, Completely and two yes. organic wines. But we're also, not all vineyards, but certain vineyards in Champagne have a bigger environmental focus. Much more, This yeah. is a community consciousness. Mm -hmm. Now, Drapier, a maison that we've had a long history with, we love very, very much. They were one of the first to be off the grid, so using solar panels, um, using gravity to pump from one tank to the other, being very conscious about their carbon footprint, so much so that they would take into consideration whether someone has travelled from across the world to come and visit their vineyard site, yeah. which is just an extraordinary level of consciousness. Massively, and, and, and likewise, um, uh, this producer, Cedric Rousset, has done a very similar thing with their winery, and they focus on doing uh, using you know, solar panels, they use geothermal energy, and they're really reducing horses in the vineyard, horses in the vineyard okay. just reducing their carbon footprint. So, um, can you imagine? I mean, these are two producers that come from a very, very long line of pedigree in the Champagne region. You know, 14 generations, 13 generations. We're talking a lot of generations here. Can you imagine what their ancestors would have thought about what they're doing now? I think they'd be massively proud if you put it into context, and, and uh, we're really excited to see what the wines present. So the first producer that we're focusing on for this month, coming out to you lovers and you connoisseurs, is the Maison de Rapier, located down in the south of Champagne. There is no surprise that we're very fond of this house. You know, it is a really well-respected house at global levels, and it's really starting to gain that credit, and credit where it's due in Australia as well. Yeah. Michel Drapier is a man that, that heads the Maison after many, many, many lineages before him. 1808, the family was founded, but what I think is perhaps more interesting about the vineyard, which is located in Irville in the mm. south, is that underneath their house and their vineyards is an incredible former Sistine Abbey. Yeah, it's, which it's, dates it's back so to beautiful. 1115. I mean, we're talking a long history before this. That's right. Um, and the, the Clairvaux Sistine yeah. Abbey, which was, I think it's one of the only heritage listed sites outside of Rams and all the beautiful yeah, it's um, Roman sites. UNESCO status. heritage, and uh, I mean, if you do ever have the opportunity to visit there, it is come with really us. worthwhile. If you want the red carpet rolled out, you need to come with us. Uh, <laughs> You've got to tell them. Um, it's absolutely. Wonderful. And, and look, this. this um, the style of this is really quite interesting. There's, there's, a, there's a heat that they've done with it and we're very excited to see. It's style. a new release, it's the first time that it's coming into Australia. Right. Yep. Um, it's a relatively new wine for, mm -hmm. the, for the Maison. Um, it's been influenced by Charlene Drapier, yep. who is the beautiful daughter of Michel. Mm -hmm. um, it's an organic a viticulture cuvee, uh, really showcasing the best of what Drapier has to offer. Clara Valleys. Such a pretty name. It is a pretty name, and like it's, it. it's a naming tri tribute to the Sistine Monastery that was previously located under the vineyards of Drapier in the south of Champagne. We are in a region where we have Kimmeridgian clay, so pre Jurassic clay. Yes, yeah, some limestone there as well. Really interesting. We do, and yeah. we're in the village of Uvi, and they are predominant with Pinot Noir. They make great big, ripe, juicy Pinot Noir. You've got a slightly southerly disposition, so a little yeah. bit more warmth, a little bit more ripeness than we have in the north of Champagne, opposite sides of the hemisphere to, of course, the wine growing regions here. We have 75% Pinot Noir, we have 10% Meunier, 10% Chardonnay, and 5% Pinot, Pinot Blanc, 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 as you see on the table when, when, you, when you receive it. The, the style of this is really quite pared back. It's sort of aperitif driven, it's fresh, it's clean, it's a green fruit for Pinot Noir that's unheard of. Um, yeah. And I think one of the great things that they've done with this is, is uh, give it that sort of vijoa, that lime, that, that, that fresh appeal that just keeps going and going. So, so there's lovely brightness and intensity, but it's, it's dry and fresh. Completely, and I want to talk about my notes on the wine in a oh, moment, yeah. but you've, 
You've got the wine that's been aged for a period of time as a still wine in an oak barrel, in an oak barrel. Yeah. And we're talking about timber that's been sourced from a local forest. Local forest down in the south, yeah. And then you're, you're blended, you are long, cool maturation. There's no filtration, there's yeah. no fining, there's no additives, there's no sulfur, there's mm. no chemicals. We're talking really natural. What I get is this chamomile, um, Michelle says elderberry, I get chamomile, these mm. sort of dried floral tea characters. Yeah. Um, really bone dry in the palate, you've only got a four gram dosage, which yeah. is still ultra, 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 ultra dry on yeah. this cuvee. And a, and a point to note is they've gone everything organic, so not just the wine and the grapes and so on, it's actually the labels are recycled paper, they've used vegetable, vegetable ink. ink, so it's, uh, it's the whole process is, is part of us. And this is a new release from the Maison and it's coming to you first, it's exciting. Our next house is the Musse Effi uh, family, which are based in a village called Quil. So if we're looking at the Valle de la Man, they are on the opposite side, if you like, and they're actually on a very unique part of soil, um, which is known as Ivite, or green clay. Yeah. So um, the wine, which we'll get into in a moment, is actually called Terre de Ivite, and um, it's from 2015. So long history we, we, here, we've right? We've got a really long Twelve history generations the family, yeah. of growing vines. That's right. You didn't always make wine. Making wine is very expensive in Champagne. It's very time consuming. So a lot of the growers have a history of making grapes yeah. and then selling them onto the Maisons. But we do now have four generations of wine making within the Maisons. Which, which began in 1925. And so they took over and they said, right, okay, we're going to start producing our own styles and really expressing our land. And they've been doing such a solid job. So Cedric and Julie. And if this um, is not passion personified, uh, yes. I don't know what is. Now, we are talking organics. We are talking on photo, focus on viticulture as natural and hands off, which is almost a bit interesting in its concept, isn't it? You're so focused on your viticulture and the way you make wine, but at the same time, it takes a really hands off approach. You know, there's minimal contact with the soil, there's yep. minimal chemicals put in the soil, there's ground cover, there's, there's plowing by horse. That's right. It's a very natural approach and, to making and wine. And he uses only stainless steel apart from one cuvee um, for, for the rosé, which is mm -hmm. interesting. So, you know, we're looking at really young but really experienced uh, team and they're one of the first, they were the first people to get their um, wine into the Club of Tresors uh, and, and, and it's 100% Meunier. I know and I think this is interesting I and mean, obviously being in the Valley de la Mar, we know that we specialise in, in Pinot Meunier, it's wonderful here, they run perpendicular to the river, yep. they've got incredible Pinot Meunier plots, you know, for many many years Pinot, Pinot Meunier was seen as the second cousin but when you look at it done really well as this house does it becomes very very exciting and you have this in this wine this month. Love it. So leading into what to expect with the wine, mm -hmm. I was um, uh, very interested to see this wine again after so many years. Yeah. We poured it, it was quite cold. We gave it a good 15 minutes. Do, when you do pour it, pour it into a glass and leave it like 15 minutes just to come to temperature and get some air. Please don't and use it, a skinny champagne flute. Yeah, just chuck it, it in would the make bin. Us, <laughs> it would make us so upset to pour a wine of this magnitude in a skinny flute. You will yeah. do it no justice. You've all got your You have your Emperor champagne flute. No excuse. No excuse, but I would even go so far as to say that you could put this into a burgundy glass yeah. because it's very vintage, it's a big wine. If you've got big glasses, use them, why not? Now, composition, of course, um, sim symbolic of the vineyards, you have 95% Pinot Meunier, 5% Pinot Noir, so you mm. have a, a Blanc de Noir, you have a vintage, it's from the 2015 base, a very big, generous year, very, very warm, very ripe. Yeah. Um, when I put my nose in, in this glass, after some time, mm. I mean, I get this clay. I get clay, yep. this wonderful sort of green clay quality. But there's more than that. There's this sort of um, flinty talking minerality. Yeah, I mean, look, clay has its own sort of properties. For me, uh, it yields not so much a fruit spectrum, even though I do get sort of mineral plum, you know, a smoky sort of edge to it. It is it's very sort of textured. There's some haze, very textured and really quite I a, I often uh, see how dry it is, but there's so much richness in there as well. There is richness and we're talking 15 months aging in the cellar with the yeast inside the bottle, 
stainless steel, so mm. you don't have any impact from the oak, it doesn't need it here. There's enough richness in the soil translating through the vine, but an ultra low dosage, mm. only 1.5 grams, so barely, barely any sugar composition needed to carry this wine. So we've got enough richness from the Pinot. Pinot Meunier fruit is tends to be very fruit forward, so you get this round voluptuousness from And, and not, everyone, not everyone can carve out an amazing Pinot Meunier. They tend to be quite, um, let's just say, fat and, yeah. and somewhat dull. Uh, it really takes a smart mind and, you know, a deft, uh, you know, deft hand to create Meunier with freshness and acidity, which this has, so I'm really, really loving what they've done. It's amazing. So we have two amazing producers and of course this month we're looking at natural winemaking mm. and the idea of organics, yeah. a hands-off approach. These are heart and mind wine producers, two yeah. families with a lot of history. We're talking about a natural approach to winemaking. We're taking out the sulfur, we're taking out the dosage, we're taking out the chemicals most importantly. We're putting in cover crops, we're using herbal tonics, we're uh, creating a complete balance in the vineyard with mm. natural things rather than anything man made yeah. and that shows so much in what the resultant product is and it takes so much hard work to get to this point I just tell you how much that is so it is a lot of hard work and I want to say to you club members some of you have been with us for a long long time some of you are new now when you're new to champagne you tend to drink Bromart, 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 big mm. brand these are not your traditional champagnes that's right please take off your champagne hat, please take away your preconceived ideas of what champagne is and I want you to view these champagnes with a fresh set of eyes. View them for what they are. They are natural wines. They are wines that are made from heart, made from good soils. These are two families with long pedigrees and long histories giving you something that is completely different to what you've seen before. Give them time, give them some grace, give them a big glass, please. Um, two exceptional producers, mm. Cedric and Julie Mousset, the, the Drapier family who we have so much time and respect for, Kiri. Yeah, and if, if you want to put them on a sort of an analogy, if you know your grandma are, is fine dining, you know, this is farm to table. If you're literally going directly, you're trying food direct and you're seeing exactly what they're doing. I love that concept. Expect a lot of personality, mm. expect a lot of character. Close your eyes, think about France, and before you know it, the borders will open and we will be back with you. Thank you for joining us for another month. It's been our absolute pleasure to bring you two new exclusive wines. Clara Valise. Clara Valise. First time in Australia. Tete de Lite. Tete de Lite 2015. Also make first sure, time in Australia. Yeah, make sure you jump onto our socials. Uh, hashtag Empress Champagne Club to leave, um, if you're posting anything or you've paired up some food, we'd love to see all that and we can just follow the story. Also, we've got a dedicated Facebook community page for you to uh, share your thoughts and ideas with other members that are part of, of the whole community and um, we look forward to seeing you on the next month until then enjoy your show bye for now Okay, so it's a new edition. We are coming to you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Did a tango lick. Okay, man. Okay. Okay, man. It's a new edition. What you go for me this? <laughs> what you go? <laughs> Sorry, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. Five I think the energy went hi. Bit off the cliff. Minimal hand intervention. We've got very low levels. <laughs> Hand intervention, sorry. In English, please, Kerry. I speak a Greek. A Greek. We, um, I'm gonna start that again. <laughs> <laughs> we, um. We, um, we, um, um, um So um, that's a word. Um, we, um. We, um. We, um, we, um. Okay, I'm ready. Excellent. Go Counting you in, my friend. Three. Go home. Shush. So we're excited to bring our next producer, which is an exclusive. <laughs>